<clears throat> yeah, so good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Ealing Mental Health Forum. Just, I think there are some people definitely that may have never attended before. So I think it would be good to go around and do an introduction. Um, I will start with you, Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Kyle, and I'm the Recovery Support Services Manager with each counselling and support. Um, I will go to you, Gina. Morning, everybody. Um, nice to see the familiar faces as well. Uh, I'm Gina from Gina Hayden from Vocational Recovery Services Mint. We work with Mint and and EIS for that matter on employment uh, related uh, matters. Welcome, Gina. Um, Alison. Thank you. Yes, morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alison and I manage the Wellbeing and Recovery College at um, at West London NHS Trust. Nice to know. I know some of you, but not all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Um, Maggie? Can you hear us, Maggie? We can see you, but we can't hear you. Oh, I'll move on, Maggie, and come back to you. Uh, Lucy? Hi, I'm sorry, I was a bit late to the meeting. Um, I'm a link worker with Ealing Acton Mint. Uh, this is the first meeting I've been able to join, so lovely to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Um, Hayley. Hi everyone, I'm Hayley O'Neill. I'm the professional lead for link workers within our MINT teams, which is our mental health integrated network teams at West London Trust. Um, I could usually attend this meeting on a Friday, but now it's on Wednesdays. I actually am at uni Wednesdays, but now I've got the lovely Lucy and we've had a bit of a turnover of link workers in Ealing MINT, but now most of them are in place. We should have a bit more of a representation each um each meeting now so apologies for the the lack of that for the last few that's okay thank you Hayley um daffodil did I say that right oh we we can't hear you again oh god <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh. no we still can't hear you <clears throat> Maybe if you try coming out and coming back in, that may work. Um, Ariane, did I say that correct? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ariane. I'm the counsellor for the Jasmine Project, so women with substance uh, misuse and mental health, so uh, multiple needs. Uh, we also um, have um, Ascent and Awas projects, which are projects for domestic violence and mental health in young people as well. And um, yeah, we work with RISE, with Mint, um, St. Mungo's, other agencies. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Um, and Mad uh, Jack? Jack. Oh, Jack. Okay. Jack. <laughs> yeah, it's got my, Thank you. my surname first. Um, oh, okay. That's why, yeah. So anyway. sorry. That's all right. Um, yeah, good morning, everybody. This is my first time on this um, in this meeting as well. Um, I work for Ealing South for Mint mm -hmm. as an employment specialist, um, supporting people, like clients with uh, everything to do with job seeking, from CV writing, interview prep, uh, and then obviously in-work support as well once they're in work. And it's, yeah, it's lovely to meet everybody. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Daffodil, should we give you a try with sound? Hopefully, you guys can hear oh, me. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> we can hear you now. Brilliant. So, <laughs> so I'm Daffodil. I'm one of the mental health practitioners um, from Ealing Network PCN. I'm based in the GP practice. So I'll talk about a bit, little, little bit about that um, later today. Okay. 
Um, just for those of you I haven't met, I'll give an introduction to myself as well. So I'm Whitley. Um, I work at Ealing and Hounslow CVS. Um, so I'm the volunteering manager. So I, I run both Ealing and Hounslow volunteer centres. Um, and so my role is to support local organisations with um, promoting, publicising their volunteering events um, or looking for volunteers, recruiting volunteers um, and training around that. And I also work with supporting local residents in finding adequate volunteering opportunities um, and some training around that as well. So that's me. Um, our first presentation is from Daffodil. So oh, Daffodil, if you wanted to go ahead, you can try and share your screen or I can share it on your behalf, whichever. Uh, works for you. Let me try first and see if it works. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yes, it is doing something. Brilliant. We, we can see it. Yeah, great. Oh, there's a lot of noise in the background. I'll mute. <laughs> So good morning, everyone. Um, as I said, my name is Daffodil Chituku. I'm one of the senior mental health practitioners um, that's based at Ealing um, Acton Mint team. Oh. Not sure why that. Yeah, so I'm based at Ealing Acton Mint team and I'm a social worker by background. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the the mental health um, practitioner's role within the GP practice and um, what that looks like as well. Um, so um, who are we? So we are senior mental health practitioners um, that's were, uh, employed by West London NHS Trust. Um, and we are jointly funded by the Trust and the Primary Care Network um, as well, called through a, through a scheme called the Additional Role Reimbursement Scheme. Hence, um, a lot of professionals often refer to us as ours um, or mental health um, workers. We are primarily based at the GP practice and we offer face-to-face -face consultation and remote consultations as well to patients. And we also provide the GPs and the nurses and other HCAs with um, advice around supporting patients with mental health um, problems and needs and how to kind of properly provide them with supporting interventions. Um, we've been put in place to support the NHS long-term plan to improve and widen the mental health support for adults within um, primary care setting, because um, there, there has been kind of a lot of concerns that people were being um, falling through the gaps and not getting the support within um, the practices when they need it. Um, so what are the role of the, ment um, the MARS workers, the ARS mental health practitioners. So we act as a bridge between the GPs and the mental health services. We work alongside the GPs to support them to manage people experiencing mental health difficulties. We offer brief assessments, um, some short-term interventions. Sometimes we have to signpost patients to other services or we make referrals onwards to other services, depending on the complexity and the risks that they might present. Um, we also support patients to reconnect or connect with the local community community because a lot of times they don't know what's available to support them in their mental health journey um, so we tend to signpost them to a lot of um, support interventions um, so they can access that as well we support them to transition also patients that being discharged from mint back into the primary care settings we support them in the gp practice just to make sure that they maintain that stability and to ensure that they have support plans in the community so they don't relapse or go back into um, secondary mental health care um, we also go back to our teams because all of our mars workers are assigned to a team so we help with the triaging of referrals coming into the service and sometimes we take cases um, that that we are concerned or the GPs are concerned that can it be managing primary care um, based on the complex needs and, and, and the risk concerns as well. Um, so some of those patients are quite high risk. So we tend to say uh, it's best if Mint um, kind of provide intervention to, in terms of risk management and support um, planning for these patients as well. Um, we tend to see adults, um, young adults from 18 onwards, um, patients that are quite low risk, um, 
and, and it depends sometimes the GPs have patients that are quite high risk and suicidal so they don't know what to do so sometimes we will take on that responsibility and make referrals to to ECAT or to the mental health services so they can get um, the immediate intervention there and then. Um, we generally see patients with um, common mental health problems and also complex mental health needs. So people that has different various of um, disorders, anxiety, low mood stress, um, panic disorders. But we also look, um, assess patients that has more complex needs as well, like um, pa patients with long term um, diagnosis, like um, paranoid schizophrenia, bipolar affective disorders. Um, we tend to review those patients and try to manage them if we can in the in the GP um, and in the community as well. We also um, provide services to support patients that are stepping down from, from Mint, um, as I mentioned before, and also patients that the GP has tried on multiple medication to maintain um, or manage their symptoms, but it's not working. And then therefore we have to support them to be um, referred onwards to Mint. Um, what are some of the benefits of having us in place at the GP practice? Um, the, G the, the patients feel more comfortable. It's a familiar environment. It's near their home. They go to their GP practice often. So they, they tend to be very good at attending and not um, not attending the appointments. Um, there's no waiting list. There's no wait, waiting time. Um, we connect the patients to the local community. Um, as I said, sometimes they're not aware of what services are available. So sometimes we do um, say, are you aware that this does, um, these services are there? So therefore um, that helps them to even tell their family and friends as well, that these are some of the things that are available in the community. Um, there's no formal referral process. Um, the GPs can book directly into our clinics. Um, we're based um, in the GP practices, so there's instant feedback to patients and to the GPs and other practice um, professionals if they need support as well. And it, we also help to reduce the referral rates into Mint um, and improve the waiting time for patients that need to be assessed. Um, and in terms of Mint has the capacity at times to um, discharge and then allow patients that actually need um, secondary care intervention to access the service and the support as well. Um, it's a very brief presentation and that's kind of what part of my role is within the primary care. And just to make it aware that we are spread across um, the Ealing uh, um, community. So there's different Mars workers like myself with varying backgrounds grants, OTs, um, CPNs, social workers, and all of us are senior practitioners. Um, thank you for listening. Any questions? Steve, I can see your hand up. <laughs> yeah, it's always keen to get in first. Um, my question was about coverage. Now, you've, you've talked about the spread, but what's the, the depth of coverage? I presume not every GP practice has got a Mars worker. Not every GP practice, but that's the the long time long term goal um to support the N NHS long term plan as well. A mm. majority of the GPs have signed up um um to having Mars workers embedded into the practices. We have a few GPs, a short number, a small number of GPs that hasn't si signed up to the the Mars Mars way of working. Um, I had the experience of immediately after a visit to the North Mint team being recommended that I speak to the, uh, you know, they're, they're in, in uh, the um, uh, Grand Union Village place, um, being signposted towards the Mars workers in the surgeries that are in the same building and the, the receptionist <laughs> didn't actually know what a Mars worker was, which is a bit unfortunate. Yeah. But um, so, it, so it's not everyone, but um, uh, and presumably it's probably smaller surgeries that don't have them. Yes, really yes, it tends to be the smaller surgeries. And what we're doing and what I've started doing in my um, GP practice, because I cover 10 GP surgeries. So they normally have World Mental Health Day um, uh, kind of conferences or invites to patients to come in. So they run it to the groups. So I've started having presentations. So to let the patient become more aware that we actually exist. So we've been embedded over a year now within the practices. And unfortunately, some of the, the patients and some of the 
um, professionals, the GP professionals are not aware. So we, what, we're starting to kind of attend these um, sessions so that the patients become more familiar. They can ask directly when they call up, can I see a mental health practitioner rather than a GP? And, and, and so the, the more we get the information out, hopefully, um, the more the, the practice and the patients um, will become more aware that we do exist. And you and you exist across the trust, so the other boroughs within the trust. Yeah. Our our neighbouring trusts, I'm thinking of North West London, where quite a few people in the room but may have overlapping services. Um, presumably they're all doing the same thing. Yes. Uh, well, we we try to tailor it more to locally to the needs. But of, I mean, I mean, adjacent yeah. trusts will be doing a similar exercise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so we try Borough, so Hammersmith and Fulham, um, Hounslow and Ealing, we do tend to, to meet up as well. Um, all the Mars work is just to kind of share um, experiences and learning and where we can kind of improve on as well. Sorry about that. Is there a coordinator for the Mars services in the sense of one wanted to get a, a, a inform the Mars workers specifically of some service or initiative or general information, is there a central point or do we have to talk to you individually? There isn't a central point at the moment. Um, we don't have a main coordinator, but um, Sharon Thompson kind of oversee um, now the, the Mars um, um, initiative. So Sharon Thompson would be the, the kind of the go-to if there's any kind of queries or information that you need in terms of for the Mars. And who is Sharon Thompson? I was going to say, yes. Yeah. You need oh. to explain maybe who Sharon is. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, she's, Forgive she's, me, I'm a very persistent... She's one of the person. associate directors. She's taken over from um, Gail Daring that used to be in that position. So she kind of um, oversees the community um, kind of um, transformation. Uh, so she tends to be the person that, with the new transformation into the services, Sharon Thompson, she's now taking on that new role. Thank you. I think I had my money's worth that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I can see another hand. My day. Sorry. Jack. It's Jack. Jack. It's oh, just, Jack. It's sorry. Jack. Hi, um, Jack. Hi, Daffodil. Um, I just wanted to find out if a client, if a um, patient does discuss um, employment being part of their, um, you know, the reason for their low mood, and you know they need the support. What usual is there a process that you would would you signpost them to? the other agencies or how, what do you normally do? Yeah, they have. we have a lot of charities in the community that offer employment support. So it depends on the age of the patient as well. Um, some of the patients we do signpost to um, Reliance and there is other um, employment support services that's based within the community based. that we, we tend to signpost patients to as well. And we have the social prescriber um, as well that looks into any issues around housing, um, um, benefits and employment as well and um, patients that think of wanting to re um, upskill or go back into education so we do have um, services that we tend to kind of signpost patients to as well so we cover a wide spectrum depending on the needs okay okay thank you hi Gina you have a question hi Daffodil nice to see you again nice to see you <laughs> Long time. Uh, I suppose my question is around because I, uh, with our, uh, my bit is like the job retention. Uh, you know, people are already employed, needing, uh, or wanting support. Um, it it's um, yeah. It it in in theory we cover um the the clients of Mint and early intervention services, mm -hmm. but um. You know, I wonder if we're in the mix at all for, um, uh, you know, job retention, um, but potential clients. Um, yeah, because a lot of services, uh, to my understanding, accept people who are unemployed rather than currently employed. So I just maybe I should take that offline. I don't know. But anyhow, I just wanted to put that in there. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. The services that we tend to signpost patients to are uh, the patients that are unemployed. There is capacity to expand that. And it, it would be nice if um, sometimes we do think about um, your service and being able to access your service as well from primary care. But I think it's something that we kind of raised a few issues as Mars workers that we've picked up um, in terms of um, employment support and also access Access to the now um, therapy, um, ther not I, I have because they now rebranded themselves, um, but accessing more um, support for patients, expanding the intervention in terms of psychological um, interventions. So we there's a few stuff we've raised that we've picked up um, and kind of escalated it. Hopefully, um, that would be part of the discussion. Um, in the future, so y your role, your your team would be quite <laughs> a good initiative if we could access you through primary okay. care as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much for that, Daffodil. Just a quick question. Um, if is it okay for me to share your email along with your presentation? Should somebody have any other questions or something? Yeah, that's that's fine. That's okay. fine. I'm happy for that to happen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, we'll move on. Ariane, do you want to go ahead with your presentation? Do you want me to share it or are you okay to share? Oh, uh, if you would like to share, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Let me just open it up. Thank you. Thanks, Whitley. Thank You're you. Welcome. Um, so I'm Ariane. I'm from Each Counseling and Support, and we have um, different um, areas of support. We've got domestic violence support. We have AWAS, which is for mental health issues, which is for teens now, and that is for um, young people, male, female as well. Um, otherwise, the DB service and the Jasmine Project um, are specifically for women 18 and over. Um, so for the Jasmine project, um, we do have a funding criteria, which is quite specific. Um, and we will, when we receive the referrals, we will go through um, each referral quite carefully. And if we have any questions, we normally go back to the referrer to make sure that um, they, they fall within our remit. Um, and we'll do an assessment um, for that, that lasts about an hour for each client to make sure that we can take them on. So thank you. So it is um, counselling and it's the sessions run between 12, 16 and 21 weeks and we assess that on a needs basis. Um, so when we take um, our uh, clients, we also offer a group. Um, so the group is, uh, we have um, different groups. So for the DB service, it can be um, our DB coaching. For the Jasmine project, the group work will be quite different so it'll be psychoeducation there will be a little bit of neuroscience that's going to be layman's terms to understand the central nervous system for example um there's anger management there's things of really a lot of creative work to work with trauma so our clients not only have um the counseling sessions but adjunct to that we have another form of therapy which is um, in very small groups um four to five held weekly for a period of eight weeks in the future, um, we are looking at also joining the DB service and the Jasmine Project service, count the group work, because we find that some of our clients sometimes do overlap in terms of their, their needs. Um, and it encourages attendance and also extra support for each client. So our women are 18 plus um, with multiple needs. The women that we take um, will have a current or a historical um, experience of substance misuse. Um, there will be also um, multiple needs. Um, so they could be worried about mental health. But we do have some clients that have sometimes um, housing um, issues 
we also have a FSS team that does um, that actually is supporting one of the clients. Um, so we, we kind of work holistically as well with other teams within the, each counselling service. Um, we receive referrals from um, many various agencies and GPs as well. And um, we try to respond as quickly as possible. So it's in terms of um, counselling service, it's myself as full time and we have two volunteer counsellors as well that each work uh, one day. Um, and um, it's the time frame to, to process um, our clients is at the moment we have a waiting list. It's not very long, it's perhaps three weeks until we can actually put somebody on. So at the moment it's working quite well. Um, one um, a very important part of the referral um, system is that we need to make sure that there are some categories that our clients need to fall within. Um, we can't take clients, for example, as previously mentioned, um, definitely you take clients that can have a chronic um, mental health illnesses that we can't take. So anything that is psychosis, anything that's schizophrenia, uh, anyone who has been sectioned um, within the last three months or has had um, experience of suicide in the last three, three months, we can't take um, as they are deemed um, too high risk at that point for, for this particular service. Um, part of the um, counselling service also supports um, substance issues with clients that are in recovery or are worried about relapse. So we do assist with relapse plans. We do refer clients that have never been referred to RISE, uh, to RISE as a sort of working tandem. So that we can provide emotional support and they will have other forms of techniques that can um, help them towards recovery. So we do try to make sure that um, the counselling is integrative. Um, so different modalities are used to um, assist the client, but we also signpost the clients to um, other agencies if there is... Um, support that would be required at that time to work adjunctly or to work post um, end of session to make sure that the client's still supported. Um, the client can actually see us after a break of three months, they can return to the counseling service as well. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, I think you can go to the next, the next um, section, yeah. So yeah, these are some of the things that we work with in, in terms of our groups. Um, the group work um, may extend to 12 weeks so our clients can, can feel supported as they are actually receiving the counselling session and then post counselling session until they are also assigned post at the agencies if that's needed or want to go to recovery college. So we do um, give that literature as well to clients who just want to keep moving forward and um, keep that support going. And um, for our um, OWAS and domestic violence services, so at the moment, our DV Ascent um, service is uh, very busy. So that is quite a, a larger service and it has been put on hold and um, all of our um, counsellors are um, taking in as many clients as, as they can. Our AWAS service is for younger people. So if you go on the counselling, um, the each counselling website, um, each area will have a different uh, referral um, form. Um, for Jasmine, you can use the form that is on the website. The clients can also self-refer. Um, so if the client's not quite ready, they, they can do that at, at, when they do feel that they are able to engage. So. Um, the readiness to engage is very important so that we can make sure that we can follow the client and, and give them the support that they need um, throughout their, the counselling period um, that we feel is, is going to be helpful for them as well. Um, so, yeah, that's our... Yeah, if you want to click on that one. Thank you, Rigi. That's kind of um, where we're based. Um, and these are my details as well. So if you want to contact me, that um, really will send you the, the information. If you have any questions, um, I'm always available and I'll respond um, as soon as possible. And then underneath that is um, our service, what we do as well. So just parts of um, areas that may be of interest. Um, and again, if you've got any questions, I think myself or Stephen can be <laughs> of assistance. So I see Stephen. So um, Stephen is a wealth of information as well. 
Um, yeah, so I've, some of you have actually referred to me and thank you very much for your referral. I've, hope I've responded to you in time. The counselling service was, yeah, I can see you nod daffodil. It's, it's actually really nice to see you. Um, the counselling service was um, sort of stopped um, until I started in August. So it is open. Um, we would love some feedback and as well as, yeah, we're open for referrals. Any questions? I'm always there. So thank you for having me. Stephen, you have a question? Um, no, I was simply going to add, if you look at the list of services, it's specifically in Ealing. Um, mm. We do currently provide both uh, generic floating support, but also hospital discharge floating support, that being psychiatric hospital discharge. So um, we used to work with our friends in, in, uh, in St. Bernard's, but now... Uh, Ealing patients who are in either Lakeside or the Hammersmith Mental Health Unit, which is, of course, is in Charing Cross Hospital, not in Hammersmith Hospital, just to confuse those of us who are easily confused. Um, there, we take direct referrals from either from either Mint, the wards, or Paul Temple, who's the hospital discharge uh, brokerage officer. Um, in terms of uh, peer support, we, we have a, what we, is called our STEP service, which provides mental health, messaging, signposting, listening ear in public spaces. So we put materials into, into public buildings that people can consult. And we also do pop-ups in uh, various places, including uh, the, the, the main Elizabeth Line station, Southall and Ian Broadway, and the Dominion Centre. And if you've got clients who, for example, are taking next steps, we recruit peer supports, that is to say, those with lived experience of mental health to take part in that service and to do the um, facilitating our, we have a tea and chat group, for example, which people come in just to, just to, to socialization. Um, they assist with the bureaucracy of, shall we say, getting leaflets and distributing and they they do they attend the pop-up sessions so there is yeah. scope for people and um i know we get a few quite get quite a few from cvs um but uh you know we're, uh, if people are interested in volunteering or indeed in our other services um you can always sign posting to me and i'll be happy to have a chat with them yeah thank you Stephen. lucy did you have a question Hi, oh, yeah, sorry, I couldn't find my uh, unmute button for a second. Um, I was just wondering, we get quite a lot of clients in who have experienced mm -hmm. DV and sexual assault and things like that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of the Ealing services, when you go to look at their counselling for that, just signpost you back to Ascent, the, uh, each service. And from our point of view, the, the referrals have been closed for some time. So I was just wondering if you have any kind of idea on the time span for that or any alternative services we can use in the meantime. Uh, in terms of alternative, alternative services, it will really be on an individual case by case basis. But it, in terms for the uh, ascent, yeah, it has been closed for a long time. It, it's We have, therefore, that particular area has had a lot of uh, referrals and I think it is pretty much a three to four month waiting time frame at the moment um, because we have recruited more counsellors for that service. So that list should be going down. Um, any up, if, if you want any updates anytime as to where we are at in terms of um, waiting time frames, do not hesitate to contact me. This is something that I can follow up with you. And I'm happy to do that on a regular basis so that um, especially when we have um, more volunteer counsellors joining us and more permanent staff joining us. And that way, perhaps that can give you um, a, a bit more clarity as to where we are at as a service. I'm wondering if there's a way we can, we can do that um, as a response um, and I'll think of if, if there's a way we can do that so that you, you can also have that information more accessible. But uh, in terms of other services, um, I, I wouldn't even know what their waiting time frames would be either. So I could recommend you somewhat somewhere, but and and they they may have also either a closed list. So if, I, 
If I might yeah. jump in, yes, certainly yeah. our ally, which is our BAME specific service, also yeah. has significant waiting times. I think it's simply, and this goes for, I think, mental health counselling as well as domestic violence counselling, is simply the demand so far yeah. it's still supply. So uh, um, I think the answer is we need more funding in this. We do, for, there, there is some counselling available for people who, shall we say, can afford to pay it, but that's very much an individual situation. Um, I, I, that's what I would say about that. It's it's not an ideal thing, but of course, yeah. if there are people who will benefit from it, but yeah, it's just pure su supply and demand thing, and uh, it would be nice if there was less demand in some respect, but it, we, we simply haven't got a, a, a way of addressing it short of increasing the size of the services, and that requires additional funding. Thank you. That's really helpful. Ariane, if you wouldn't mind, please sending me your email address just so we can kind of link in about that um, as and when I find that really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it should be um, my email address will be on the presentation. So the second last slide, you have phone number address, you can pop in and come and see me. Um, the idea too is we have a new flyer for the Jasmine project. So um, I know that there's one that's been included in the presentation that's been used for quite some time, but there is a brand new one coming out and will be printed and hopefully going out to any service that would like um, some and I could also get some self referral forms, which may be helpful. Um, Anything that, you know, so you want to feedback, um, I will take on board and see how else we can kind of spread the word and have more clients uh, get support as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ariane. And just to say as well, I will be sharing um, Ariane's presentation so you'll be able to have access to her email address and stuff. Um, thank but thank you again for that. Um, Hayley, are you ready to give your... I am, yes. Hi, everyone. I've been joined by my colleague, Orphea. Orphea, mm -hmm. are you there? I am here. Yes. Hayley, do you want me to share the screen or the presentation that I have? Yeah, is that all right? And then uh, maybe first. you can start and I'll jump in. Just yeah. Me know. Perfect. All right, let me just share. So where is it? Is everyone able to see this presentation? Fantastic. Uh, go to presentation mode. Actually, I can leave it as this. So hi everyone, thanks for having me. So my name's Orphea Charles and I am the young adult pathway lead that oversees um, transitions from adult to CAMS and also lead on local liaison and I oversee Ealing. Um, so the Young Adult Partnership panel came in, or rather, in, well, embedded in the trust in September 2022 as part of the NHS long-term plan to support that of smoother transitions from, ad, from CAMS to adult services, but also um, supporting the gap of provisions for young people in and around the locality. So the pathway is not just in Ealing, so it's 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 trust wide. So it's so it's a blanket approach um, in Ealing, Hounslow and also Hammersmith and Fulham. And I have an equivalent in each area. So in our team, this is made, I can't even um I'm so rubbish at using Zoom. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Minimize this. That's better. So <clears throat> in our team, it consists of myself. Um, we also have a consultant psychiatrist who's Martina DiSimplicio. And we have a 16 to 25 link worker in each Mint team. Um, so each Mint team has a dedicated 16 to 25 link worker and the link workers are invaluable to our pathway because they case hold our cases. And I know Hayley will speak more on behalf of the link workers. And we also have a pathway administrator and that makes up our team. So just to give a bit of background with regards to why we came about. So as I said, it's part of the NHS long-term plan with regards to how do we actually support 
um, young people and minimize that fall through gaps in service provision. So obviously we can see some of this data here, but the one that I wanna draw your attention to is the 30% of young people. So what was previously happened before, before this pathway came into play? So I should also mention as well, actually, that there are only two um, NHS Trust at this point within London that has rolled out this pathway and that's us at West London NHS Trust and also CNWL so as we know West London Trust covers Hammersmith, Southall and Ealing and CNWL covers um, Hillenden, Brent, Kensington and Chelsea and I believe Barnet if I'm not sure but those are the London um, bases that currently has this pathway in play. So what was previously happening was that at the age of 18, when an individual turns 18, they were previously discharged from CAMS and a lot of the young people were then going back to the care of the GP. There were also individuals that were referred to, as we know, secondary mental health services. But we know with mental health service at the time, there is um, there's always going to be a waiting list or um so not only that there's waiting lists, but also the high threshold. So young, a lot of young people were going back to the care of the GP, but they still had presenting issues that required support. And as we know of young people, back to the care of the GP, and I've worked with young people for over 16 years, when you turn 18, not a lot of young people are often going to reach out to their GP to say, hey, I need help unless it gets at the final stages where they actually do need that help. So what was then happening was that it was acquainted to 30% of young people between the ages of 18 after their discharge from CAMS was then represented, it will represent into adult mental health service. And I think this amount is staggering. So this is why as part of the NHS long-term plan, we came into play. Um, so as part of our pathway, as well as engaging with stakeholders, um, you know, with regards to clinicians and practitioners, commission, you know, commissioners, we also had to engage with young people because a pathway that's um, that is for young people also needs to have young people behind it. And as part of our stakeholdership, this was part of, you know, this slide shows a lot of what young people were saying, what they wanted in a pathway and what would support those provision in services and, you know, minimize those, you know, them falling through gaps in provisions. So one of the things that, you know, we can all see it here, but one of the things that young people wanted was a holistic whole person approach. So rather than seeing them as a diagnosis or an illness, it's to see them as a whole person. And I believe that's one of our things on this pathway in that we have to, we, we work towards that holistic approach. So rather than just seeing it as, okay, young person's been, you know, they need um, adult secondary mental health this is the only thing that can help that we only have medication we only have psychotherapy we have to look at it holistically because yes a young person for example may have a diagnosis of depression and anxiety but it's more so what were those triggers why were they in cams it may be that you know family circumstances young people are now learning about themselves their sexuality their identity they're moving on to university so all these are impacting on young people so rather than seeing it as just mental health and we're just going to go to secondary mental health or refer you back to the care of the GP and you reach out to them when you need help it's at that point of discharge from CAMS and what we're now doing is that and I'll go into the core elements of what we actually have on the pathway but part of that which we now have for every young person is that at the age of 17 so any young person on a CAMS waiting list so they don't need to be having active intervention so at the age of 17 each young person is pulled through on Willoughby on my transitions tracking data so I have oversight of all young people in Ealing and at 17 and five months that's where we actively start to discuss transitions and what are the most appropriate services um, for young people that they may be so it's not only um, adult I mean secondary adult mental health or primary care that they'll be referred to we also have programs that I'll go into as well so as well young people wanted services that was that had youth-led approaches so again as I said having worked with young people in young people services for so long Yes, I, I am a qualified nurse. And when even when I worked in that role, young people used to say to me, Orphea, the doctor can tell me the most fantastic thing. You as a nurse could tell me the most motivational thing. But at the end of the day, times are changing. That's not always what's going to help. We want to hear from other young people what's worked for them. What was the thing that, you know, that minimised 
their presentation so that's what young people wanted so even though yes we have the doctors the gp the psychiatrist and so on and so forth young people wanted to hear from other young people in regards to the change in times because obviously when I was young the advice that I would give is not what I would give to someone in 2024 and only someone that's grown up in 2024 will actually understand and have those same lenses of those individuals um and I think another thing in here that I wanted to draw attention to was um, better communication. And that's going to go on to why we have our YAP panels. So with regards to those better communications, it's around that stigma for young people and actually having those information that's readily available. So we know that when young people are referred into services, um, there is often these waiting times and then sometimes young people then um, are contacted when they're at the top of that waiting list so now we have processes in place that you know it cuts down on that waiting time because you know a young person that's referred into a service we might say there's a three month waiting period however three months for a young person may seem like a year and that equates to disengagement in services and that was a huge problem that we were seeing um, previously to the pathway so this is why again as part of the NHS long-term plan that element of our panels this is why we have those that's come in that we have those elements of better communication so if one service can't help what are the other services that can help um, and I'll go into that as well um, moving further along um, so what are our goals so for the pathway we can see here is to enhance support um, provided to 16 to 25 year olds um, by making um, it more individualized individualized and providing a holistic approach um, providing and ensuring um, seamless transition into adulthood by coordinating ethics among local partnerships. And that's part of our role as well, myself, Gemma and Jade. So as the Young part, um, Adult Partnership leads, um, or rather Pathway leads, part of our role is liaising with some of those local partnerships that, you know, because as we know, you know, I know a lot of people or a lot of young people may think, unless I'm in a mental health provision, then I'm not able to be supported. But I think my trigger line that I always say is, you know, we have so many fantastic services in the community, but we need to ensure that not only professionals are known about them, but also the young people that we engage with. Um, so that's a really important and a huge part of our priority when we actually um, when we when we work along this pathway um, and also improve um, engagement and navigation of services. So improving those engagement and navigation of services. I know Hayley will speak on it. That's a lot of what the role of our link workers do, not only our generic link workers, but also our 16 to 25 link workers. The only difference to our 16 to 25 link workers is that our link workers can work with individuals from the age of 16. So whilst they're in CAMS, and that's the process of supporting with that transition into adult services. Um, so, then moving on to a core element of our pathway, one of them is the YAP panel. So YAP panel for each of our localities happen on a bi-weekly basis. So the panels um, are in place and their role are, is to support clinicians and, um, and practitioners to develop um, a management plan. So it's more like um, a multi-agency plan. So I know we in our teams we have MDTs and so on and so forth, but the difference to the panels is that rather than just having NHS professionals, we also have professionals from... Um, let me go into this one because this will probably make more sense. So we have core members and part of those professionals, so it would not only be from um, mental health background, and this is the element of having that holistic approach that we're seeing um, and developing and devising and formulating management plans that sees it from the lens of different perspectives. So we have, yes, we have CAMS who are our core members. We have our Mint team. So we will have our Mint managers who are part of those um, core members. We also have um, social care, so all elements of social care, but we also have um, digital platforms that actually do come in to say exactly what the platforms do. So that's in the um, in with regards to Cooth or Quell. Um, IAPs are also part of the core members, but we also have our VCSEs. Our VCSEs are made up of 
many um, community partners and Jasmine Project has attended our panels on a number of occasions as well in each project, which has been absolutely fantastic. We also have one of the services that we know that, you know, after working on the ground after, you know, over a year, there was a huge gap with regards to ASD and ADHD support services because we know post 18, the provision for adults, there is a huge gap. So we've been working really hard to find support services for ASD. And we currently have Respond who support individuals um, that has diagnosis. So they give, they um, support around those therapeutic interventions and also building resilience in um, young people. Um, as part of our core members, I know Daffodil is spoken. So Mars workers are also um, part or should be part of our core members and panel. And we also have primary care. So GPs, which has been a huge um, within the last six months, GPs has been a huge part of GPs actually coming themselves to present young people on our, on our panels, which are absolutely fantastic. And we have our crisis team. But as I said there as well, our link workers are also part of our panels um so that's literally what our panel is made up of so another core cool element which i haven't got on this um that i haven't got on on the slide is our transitions tracking i did say a little bit in the beginning but that's the element of supporting individuals from the age of um, anyone from the ages of 16 to 25 or rather at the age of 17 we start to devise those pathways into which services they will be going into so it would not only be to adult mental health secondary mental health services rather we will also um, refer into some of our VCSE services um, another one that I have not put on the slide is one of the huge step down because what we were finding after having this pathway is that everyone was saying okay it's fantastic we have 16 to 25 but what about younger people so from the age of 13 for example because they're also in camps that requires that early intervention and support so then we went into partnership um, and funded Brentford Football Club for whereby now they're one of our hugest VCSCs and community group which we work alongside um, delivering the one-to-one -one, um, advantage mentor program and that's where we support individuals from the age of 13 to 20 years old and as the pilot we're doing it as a step down from CAMS or link workers um, because we know Hayley would again go into it link working is a very short sharp intervention so therefore if there are caseloads on the on the link workers case slow we're also using it as another step down from mint link working because this is a one-to-one -one mentoring that individuals will receive um, on a weekly basis for a period of six months so how does it work um, so any professional so anyone sitting in this forum can actually request consultation from our YAP panels it doesn't always have to come from a, a, a CAMS clinician or practitioner nor a MINT clinician or practitioner it can come from absolutely any professional so it could be in education so any professional that works with a young person between the age of 16 to 25 they can re um, request consultation through our panel and what our panel aims to do as I say is rather than looking at it from a mental health perspective we look at it as a whole person so if that young person for example is neat you know what other what other or they need to learn around learn about you know their own mental health again recovery college is a huge part of this for us who is often involved in our panels so around learning around your own mental health needs so absolutely any professional can re request consultation from the panel um, and again I think this is the positive thing of the panel in that rather than having referrals professionals know that they, they have insight of the young person there and then they know if they can accept there and then so there is not this three months eight months six months we know exactly we can formalize that plan there and then for a young person and know exactly where they're going who's going to be taking them on and further supporting young people disengaging from services um, and falling through um, service provision and that's my part Hayley do you want should I let because I do have another little bit here mm -hmm. okay. um, that obviously goes on to why YAP panel it's just a vignette but I know that um, the presentation will be cascaded anyway. Mm -hmm. So if anything, anyone can just have a look of, you know, exactly why this is just a vignette of a young person that's come through panel. And then it goes through explaining the outcome of the young person just to show the smooth transition that had happened, where the young person is now. And this all, and this, you know, part of that thing of making it individualized. 
and holistic because usually when we get referrals for young people we often see the medical side in the sense of or the troubled aspect or the concerning aspect however with the panel we try to get a whole picture of the young person so what are their likes what are their dislikes what are their hopes dreams and aspirations so as well as having those impacting factors that's impacting their mental health we know as well that it's not only medication or therapy that's always going to support the young person but what do they like what do they love this young person for example it was an extremely complex case, but this individual was extremely articulate. They were not articulate, artistic. They were extremely artistic. Um, and that was the main thing, what we tried to look at more on the strength and how we can support that young person. So as well as, you know, yes, they transitioned into MIN and they were eventually allocated a care coordinator, but all the other services that was also supported that overarching support were services, for example, like the listening place. And again, I say, yes, we always have Mint and everyone think, oh, no, it's only Mint that can help. We have services in the community that we've reached out to, like the Listening Place. The Listening Place is an absolutely fantastic service because they provide one to one therapeutic for support for individuals that are that act, have active suicidality or actively self-harming. This individual, as I said, extremely um, artistic. They engaged with um, art therapy. And they also engaged, I believe, with the recovery college. So that was a fantastic um, um, outcome for us. And that was the reason why we have our YAP panels, that we're not only just looking at the medical side, but also taking into context the whole person and rather than just, you know, medication, because we know with young people, they might stop medication, but things and, you know, it's, it's about what tools are we actually giving young people? What practical tools are we giving young people as opposed to only medication or therapy? Because that element of transition, so many things happen in a young person's life. You know, they're moving, learning about themselves, as I said, which are all impacting factors. So this is why we came about. We've now been embedded in the Thrust Trust since September 2020 two and i hand over to you Haley. i'll stop sharing lovely um i'll keep it short and sweet i know i've presented on our link workers at this panel before so i think the key part here is with our 16 to 25 link workers as orpheus said we're looking at the holistic approach so even though they're coming into mint it's really about how are we supporting that young person with all of the aspects of their life and it's really about that connection piece um, as we know, a lot of people coming through, especially young people are isolated, they might be struggling, you know, they might not be going to um, in education, it might be work, it might be their family dynamic. So our link workers are really kind of, we've really tried to upskill them in a, in a lot of those sort of different aspects that maybe we haven't had as much um, training with in Mint before with our general link workers. So really connecting them with the community and sort of thinking outside the box. The link workers work really closely with Orthia, as I think I think she said she has a lot of experience working with young people, and our link workers are all very sort of passionate about working with that age group as well. Um, you know, we know there's new themes coming around around young people using technology a lot more and how they get their information, even things that to a lot of us and a lot of our um our staff in the team forget, sort of that young people might not like to answer the phone or you know for everyone wants to know who's calling but especially for young people I think is there's a lot more text and email communication which is something that we would never really thought of pre-pathway so it's really just about that connection one thing the author and the link workers are telling me is we are a short-term intervention but it is taking that time to build trust and again it's us listening to that as a service so we are continuing to adapt as much as we can like Orphe said that we're working more of the well-being and recovery college I know Alison's here to have a think about that have a think about our groups and our link workers are really vital in that so as much as they're sort of one-to-one -one sessions they're also really working on all these other parts of the the pathway and with the VCSE to really find out what's going on and make sure we can really support our young people and help them engage better and us sort of engage a lot better than than we have probably previously as a secondary mental health service um i will circulate all the slides anyway um and then whitley i'll also just circulate a whole the whole mint package i guess so everyone's got it i'll get if gina i can't remember if you've got a leaflet we can maybe just send everything around as one big email people can save it and then they can have all the kind of mint and west london resources in one place might be a bit easier um we spoke at you a lot so that might be a good place to stop but happy to revisit anything. My email or his email will be on everything as well. So anyone can email. And Whitley, when you send it out, please do say as well that other people that couldn't make it today, because I know this is a very small proportion of our partnership, 
can reach out at any time. Uh, you know, we're continuing to work on strengthening our partnerships as well. So I'll stop now. <laughs> Thank you, Hayley. Um, did anybody have any questions for Hayley or Orphia? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Steve. This is more of a question for the room. I don't know that that Orphia would necessarily know the answer to it, but I know historically one of the issues we've had in, in locally is that people being referred to CAMS and being on the list so long that they fall off the other end due to age without ever being assessed. And I also know that there's been some uh, funding in, around, or certainly some initiatives around to try and reduce waiting lists, one of which is actually targeted at providing counselling for young people. Now, I know there's currently, this is kind of out to tender in Hounslow, um, and I, my experience of the panels has been in Hounslow rather than leaving that Ariane's bag. But um, uh, I was wondering, is there a similar exercise going on in Ealing to fund specifically young persons counselling, mental health counselling? Does anybody know the answer to that? Or who's doing that at present if it's already being done? Because I'm not quite sure that I know the answer. And it would be useful to know that answer, given that we've services that are working with young people uh, around domestic violence, but mental health is likely to be an adjacent issue. So at the moment, Steve, I don't think there's particular funding specifically around young people's counselling. I know that we do work very closely with each in Ealing, that each counselling. And um, is it Syrah that's with yourself, the young person? Yeah, so Syrah. So yeah, Syrah that, is who- Syrah is part of our, our wives, that's Absolutely, correct. yeah. So that that's that's who we work particularly closely with, with the young person's counselling. And Syrah has been along to our YAP panels as yeah. well. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what we currently have in Ealing specifically for counselling. But as I said, there is that step down that they do have that element of being supported in the community by the community mentors, because there is that element as well. Um, maybe, maybe perhaps Daffodil, I don't know if, if GPs will come to you with regards to when do we refer a young person into CAMS and when should we not? But what we're saying at the moment is, if a young person's not on a CAMS wait list or if they are not engaging in any intervention, they would then they would not be pulled through on the transitions tracker. So what I've been saying to all GPs is that even if the young person is 17 and eight months, for example, I know CAMS were previously saying, no, we won't take them. But now as part of the new protocol, it's even if you do take them and have them on the waiting list, this is the only way we will pull them through on the tracker to ensure those smoother transition into an onward service. If they're not on that tracker, then they would fall through that provision completely. So even if a young person is 18.3 then please still refer on to cams and cams have obviously been they know the fact of okay that's the only way the young person will actually be cited on our ah, that that makes sense because as you say you know people wouldn't bother referring a 17 year old historically because they know they'd never actually be seen mm -hmm. um okay but interesting so it's not that i don't know about something in terms of counseling the counseling's not there okay it is still a huge gap, Steve, and I've actually asked because Mint, um, you know, we do fund some programs, so we we might fund one of yours, so apologies if that's the case, but I will, I am having a meeting with the Ealing service manager as well because the funding reviews are coming up, um, that it is something across the board, we know, not just with young people, but especially well, with young people Well, um, I know as well. that part of what <laughs> yeah, they're doing in hand, in though, is it's specifically targeted at reducing waiting lists. And I gather that's becoming a bit of a, shall we say, a, a, a bit of a priority for NHS is waiting lists. So that's good. And if you feel like generating some funding and eating for young persons, counseling, we'd be more than happy to bid for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did anybody else have any questions or comments? No. Um... So we've come to the end of the presentations. Um, did anyone have any any other business in general? No, I just wanted to say though for the forum, just um, as a point, the March forum will actually be in person. 
Um, so February will go ahead online, whereas March will be actually in person. Um, and I know we discussed it at a couple of meetings about having them in person. And I think we will aim to have them at least every three months or so one every three months in person. Um, so yeah, once I get the um, location for it, then I will send it out to you. <laughs> I will send it out to you guys, but just so you all know, it will be in person in March. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions in general for me or anyone else? No? Okay, well, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I look forward to seeing you um, at the February's forum and definitely in person. It would be great to, to meet everyone in person. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, I will be sending out the presentations and everything and I'll wait for your email, um, Hayley, with all that mid stuff and then I'll send out all the all the presentations. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, all. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.